Hey, this is David Richard Scale Studios. Someone asked me how I was able to adjust the bed to uh, compensate for the uh, stepper dampers I put on the X and Y axis because there is problems. The other people have done it on YouTube. I wanted to show my own version. I did a quick fix. You do a little, do lose a little bit of your Y axis uh, axis um, build plate, but it's a quick fix. You're not cutting anything. You're not even taking the machine apart. Um, I'll even show you what it looks like now. What happens when you do it? Let's go into our prepare. We're going to go into auto home, and you'll see the uh, thing is clicking there. Then all of a sudden, crash. You see it kind of uh, tilt to the um, right side. It kind of pushed away around it because it's catching part of the Y sled uh, on the uh, Y motor, and then it's having to tilt till it hits the um, end stop on the Y axis. So I'm going to do a quick little fix to it. I've done it before, but I, I took, put it back together the old way. I'm going to show you how to do the quick fix. I'll show you a couple other crashes real quick, and we'll be right back. All right, we had a small disaster. Uh, you missed all of it. I forgot to put my mic on, so it was in silence. Um, we were changing this out real quick. Uh, I busted the uh, end stop. Uh, mounting board is like a piece of ABS plastic or something like that. Uh, luckily, let me put this on real quick. I went on Thingiverse and there is a replacement I'm going to have to print out. I torqued it down way too much. Wanted to show you what I'm doing to stop that uh, Y sled from uh, torquing. To hit this, it had to you know turn to the right a little bit. It, um, spin this around. If you put see down in here let me see if I can get a camera down in there the since you can almost see inside there let's see if I can get it down inside I'm trying to manipulate the camera you can actually see uh, where it's taking the paint off the sled so do I have something long to point with and Still can't get a good view. Let's see if I can. I'm going to tilt it over a little sideways here and pull it back. Still can't see it. There we go. Okay, there we go. You see that little piece of. Let's see if I can pull it back now again. There we go. It, it hits right there, right where it kind of it bends. I think you can grind that down. It'll make it a lot easier, but I, I don't want to take this thing apart. I'm not going to take a Dremel and a vacuum in here and do it. And when it comes back, it hits that Y stop. Because it probably adds uh, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch onto the um, how the Y motor sticks out with the um, stepper damper. So I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to print. Uh, I'm printing a bunch of them. I'll print four. Because I have another Ender 3 out of the th third generation I just picked up from uh, eBay. I did a bid on it through Creality Shop, and they took it. So it was awesome. So uh, I got it at a really reasonable price. And that's the one comes with the glass bed. This one's upgraded. So we'll be back. I'm going to readjust everything. Let me go back to where we were so I can show you what I had to deal with or why we're doing this in the first place. So you see why that metal hits. Well, you have these long... That's not even in focus anymore. Sorry about that. Let me try to get this in in there so we can see what we're doing. There we go. So uh, there's some kind of weird thing they did there. I have no idea what. Oh, I see. There's another screw coming back through that. It's a part of the Y mount on this side. I yeah. So I was thinking about changing the Y mount, but that is just way um, too crazy. Because there's no way, to, I don't think I can pull it back any further. So that's a tap, or these were tapped out, or uh, put um, threads in it for the Y mount to go onto the extrusion here. So then you have these two holes, and you have these long M4s. You can see that. They come through, and you can see what I did to the uh, end stop. The end stop sits like this. Obviously, it has those two things that used to be completely uh, finished. There we go. Again, 
Let's see if the, we can put some more light on it. There, you can see what happened. I was just torquing it down, torquing it down, talking to myself, obviously, with my microphone off, and it just snapped. So uh, not all is lost. We'll be back real quick. I'm going to print one out. Uh, like I said, I'll print four out just in case if I snap one again. And uh, we'll install it and then go from there. Um, like show my bloopers. Uh, it's actually part of the process. And uh, we'll see you in a second. Okay, we are back. Um, another learning experience today besides snapping this, um, printing black opaque uh, PETG on the... Uh, Prusa Mark III, uh, the filament sensor reflects back and stops. Had to do some research on that. Turn off the filament sensor, no problem. Uh, this is eSun Opaque PETG. Very nice stuff. Um, up here, let me see, show it on the camera here. Well, let's see, let's see if we can go in this one. Can you see it? A very solid piece. It had to have supports. Let me see, I'd probably put it up here is better. Some light on it. There we go. Had to have supports underneath. It's actually got a little slot. As you can see, in the uh, obviously in the recording, that's what it looks like. Um, it's going to slide down here. And this is even better because I was originally just going to move this forward, the broken piece. Let me sh show you how I was going to do this. Take this out again. Obviously, when I snapped this, it was actually a blessing in disguise. Because I think this will be a more solid solution. So I was just going to move this forward, take out the original. Hopefully everyone understands this is so kind of an accident that happened. This is the original. Um, God, this has got to be an 18 uh, M418. I was going to do these M <clears throat> M48s with the hammer nuts and just slide this forward and not have to use the uh, tapped extrusions. If you can see right there. So we're going to still use the tapped extrusions, which is kind of cool. And I got to take this apart and then this, this slides in very nice and you can see the holes have adjustment slots in them. So they're not like a straight uh, one position thing so we can move it back and forth. So let's try to put this together now. Um, I'm going to just take this apart right now and as we can see on the camera below, hope everything stays in focus. This is going to be boring, so I'm going to uh, take a break for a second, get this apart. I'm going to mount this onto the uh, new part, and I'll put uh, links to everything below. The eSun PETG I'm using, uh, I guess I don't have to use those nuts anymore, and I'll do the, um, the Thingiverse part. This is pretty cool. I made four of them. I don't think I'm going to have another free, but you never if I snap this one. And the other one that I'm going to be unboxing soon, the third generation comes with a glass plate and... Uh, what, whatever else it has on it. Actually, a plastic plate, too, is kind of weird. Bare aluminum, we'll get into that later. I don't want to get on a tangent. I like how this feels. It feels a way better design. So I'm going to come back, take that apart, put it onto the new um, mounting piece, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. We got everything connected. Um, luckily, I am a hobbyist. I had a... Uh, let's see, we have this. Can you see that? A little uh, pin vise. Uh, just a big enough to get to the... Um, the screw holes, these are it's an M3s holding this all together. And so it's nice and tight. Those areas where I had to put the supports on uh, are the back end of the uh, end stop. Uh, there's, that's the part where the uh, component parts stick out with the solder. So it uh, sits nicely and flush, as you can see. Very tight, very solid piece, obviously, now. So it just fits on the rails. The original M, uh, M4, whatever these are, 12s, 15s, or something like that, are going to fit nicely. And we have that play with the holes. I'm going to get over that more. Oops. I think that was a... It's so hard to get a nice view in there, and I just screwed it up worse. Okay, let's see if we can do that. That's not good. Let's see, like that, and like that. There we go. So let me get this, this started again. And this is not going to be easy. I'm kind of doing it blind and doing this on camera. Let's see. I can, as long as I get the first one started, I'm good. Yeah, we're good. And then we get the second one. Mm. 
And this is kind of the easy part, just get this in. And it's kind of nice not having the hammer nuts now because those are kind of finicky to tighten down enough to um, hold it securely and secure itself and then uh, be able to move it around. This way we're still able to move it. And then I can go on this side. I'm going to, sorry about the crazy cam work. You can see better down here what's going on with the, uh, there, you can see the, let me get a, a little wrench. That's <coughs> what's hitting the Y-axis motor now. That's the edge it keeps hitting. So when it pulls in, <coughs> and you can see that, let's bring this back up. Try to make this as comprehensive as possible. So that's the, uh, <coughs> the Y-sled wheel. And these are kind of off-centered too. It's kind of weird how they did this thing. And that's why that belt, that bed tilted when it was not fixing, fixed right. So, so right now you can see that it's not hitting. And then right, right about there. And actually this is going to be a better fix because I'm, I'm going to move it over a little bit more right there. Let me pull this out a little bit. Okay, so front row seats, obviously. Let me pull this back a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now we're good. And now we're using strictly aluminum frame. There's no, uh, like I said before, no hammer nuts having to uh, try to line them up correctly and grab. And uh, they're not going to snap the plastic. And like I said, this is 80% PETG. And let's see if we can find the other part. Uh, uh, maybe a millimeter thicker so that's not it's still not gonna maybe it helps a little bit because uh, um, if it's further away from the frame it's gonna catch the round part of the uh, the bearing that hits it so it gets a little bit faster I don't know if it's gonna make that much difference but it's gonna keep the frame from tweaking and finish this tightened up so I'm gonna finish tightening this up we're gonna get this back on all fours again We'll do a test on the um, homing, and we're all done. And that'll be the end of the video. See you in a second. Okay, we're back. Let's see how this works. So we got the uh, we got the view back here. Kind of watch that. Let's see if I can get a more of a and watch this if it cranks around again, like you saw in those couple little demo things I did. So let's go to prepare, auto home. Not there. Oh, there. Nice. See how quiet it was? And then thumped and crank. So uh, it's working. So uh, sorry about the roundabout way of figuring this out. I was just going to do a simple couple screws and the hammer nuts. Wound up breaking something, being stupid with the uh, tools. And then finding Thingiverse, a fix on it. And it's working amazing now. And actually, um, I'll put all the parts on there. If you want to do the hammer nut thing and not want to print out anything, I'll do that. Um, also, but I recommend uh, the Thingiverse thing. The gentleman won't take a uh, tip, so um, maybe write something to him, or I'm going to do something right now, write a note to him and say, this is a great part, uh, save me on that, and I'd d definitely give him three bucks or uh, whatever he wants as a tip for that. So as usual, thank you for joining me. Um, we are in the middle of filming the um, smoothers. Uh, they're still... In the box here, we have the one model uh, uh, done that we decide to use, and you haven't seen that yet. So you'll, you'll see that, and right after this, I'm going to tear this apart, and we'll start putting the smoothers in and doing uh, finishing that video up also. Thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate you using the Amazon links. Uh, it's actually making my studio a little bit uh, more usable and um, buying more filaments. 
And then uh, I don't know if you're all into 3D printing, also I'm gonna start painting 3D prints with airbrushes. If you see my uh, thing at the top of my uh, artist page here on YouTube or go on Facebook or Instagram, even Twitter, I have uh, my homemade airbrush booth. I collect airbrushes as well as 3D printers, another part of my hobby. I'm trying to bring all that together and uh, we'll go from there. So once again, thank you for joining me. I hope this helped you. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, put something below and I will get back to you as soon as I can and we'll see you in the next video.